Well, this is something a little bit different. There was a point in a man's military career where you were no longer driving unit to unit in Germany, in the fields, relying on your open-air jeep, cold. No, you, you get to the point where you start to appreciate the luxuries of life, where instead of the field you're going office to office, meeting dignitaries and politicians. Where you need a little bit less leaf spring and a little bit more chrome. Perhaps a little bit more fin at the back. You want a Chevy. Well, here it is, the Chevy 1503 staff car 1957. What it basically is though, it's not all that impressive at all. It looks like a Bel Air. No, it's a Chevy 150. This was the bottom end of Chevrolet's brochure in 1957. And well, I mean, I guess tax uh, responsibility, the, the government's not being too flash with its, uh, the taxpayer's money. I'll say it's money, I guess both. But basically, if you know anything about Chevys, which I don't, that's what this is. Um, the main reason I'm doing this is A, I have a, a little bit of free time at the end of one of the days here of filming, and B, well, it's a military vehicle and it's something that we tend not to think about very much. So, what the hell? Let's see what we can find about this Chevy 150 as I'm alternating between the camera and the great Google. So starting the tour of the vehicle, well, we have front and center the Chevrolet nameplate in chrome. It is above the upper lip of the radiator grille frame, which is chrome. We have the Chevrolet logo above the bottom half of the intake, which is chrome. Headlights, of course, one set each side. No blackout markers here because everybody wants to know that the general is coming. The headlights are framed with chrome. Moving further down past these little fog lights here, which are also encased in chrome, are these chrome protrusions. The function of these protrusions, it may surprise you. I have no idea what it is. It may surprise me too. There's a little item here. It performs absolutely no function I can think of whatsoever. It is chrome. Moving around to the side, uh, we do pass these little indents here, which are not chrome, and I suspect are supposedly representative of extra intakes or vents or what have you. The wheels. Tires are 7.5 by 14 for ply, 22 PSI with hubcaps, chrome. Moving further back to the large curved windshield, and I have to say, I, I've always wondered about car restorers, where they get pieces like this, because it's not as if you can go to your you know, local glass factory and just have a sheet of glass, not with this special curve on it. It does have a chrome surround with either chrome or stainless steel wipers. My wife and I have always considered on occasion just getting a project car to, to play with, but every now and then I, I suspect it's more trouble than it's worth and more money than it's worth and all that. Besides, all the easy ones have already been done already. Moving further past, if you didn't realize that you were looking at a Chevrolet from the front, it does remind you on the side. There is a little bit more chrome in the windows and then of course you get to the door handle, chrome. With lock. I'll come back to the inside. It's actually kind of interesting inside. There is more chrome of a purpose I cannot identify with black paint inside it to make it look more interesting, I guess. More chrome here and a little bit more chrome trim that comes all the way to the side. The tire pressures in the rear are the same 22 PSI. And so we come to the tail of the vehicle. I have read that the fins are supposedly inspired by the F-86 fighter jet. And you do note how they are tastefully lined with just a little bit of chrome coming down to the taillight and then more of these chrome protrusions whose purpose I cannot fathom, except maybe they mash up with the chrome protrusions at the front and, and they work a bit like a, a bumper. Coming past the chrome or stainless steel chromed bumper. Oh, by the way, the exhaust pipe underneath is silver colored. And we come to, again, the Chevrolet logo. And I'm not entirely sure this is an official marking of the 1957. I suspect a little in-joke. 
The color, by the way, is 14087 gloss olive drab. I haven't figured out if there's a trunk release, so I have the key and we can have a quick look inside. Open simply enough. I've seen bigger boots, I've seen smaller boots. Uh, do note, of course, that the spare tire takes up a substantial portion of it and I think that's a jack. Uh, there is no chrome on a spare tire. You've got to take the hubcap off the one anyway to undo the nuts. So you just slap it on the spare wheel when you've put it on and fitted it. If you were to come around the far side of the vehicle, well, it's just a mirror image of the opposite side. There is no wing mirror, though, on the right side. Actually, now look at it. There's no wing mirror on the left side either. So good luck reversing. There is a rear view mirror. Something I haven't seen yet is where the hell is the fuel tank? Okay, so now you get to uh, It's clever, I'll grant you. No, they don't do that anymore. So, and that done. Oh, the fuel tank, by the way, was 16 gallons. Time to open up the hood and see what's underneath. It's an engine. Now, if you're a general officer of sufficient rank and stature to warrant one of these to get around in, uh, obviously in the event of World War III breaking out, you needed to get to your duty station right quick. And opening up the hood, the engine that results is a little disappointing looking, really. It does have a cool name. It is the Blue Flame 140. Other engines in the lineup included the Turbo Fire, and the Super Turbo Fire, uh, both of which were V8s. The Blue Flame, however, is a 235.5 cubic inch inline valvin head six cylinder. Cranks at 140 horsepower, just like it says on the side. On the plus side, the engine bay is pretty empty and it gives us a good view of all the various different components, such as the steering mechanism or the horn, radiator, uh, it's, a, it's a very simple engine, really. You see, when the Army bought these things, and I should say that the Air Force had them as well, um, they bought the base, base version. The only two options that the procurement officer ticked were for the cigarette lighter and the heater. Creature comforts. That didn't even come with radios. Anyway, so what else is in here? So looking in the left side of the vehicle, I mean, nothing amazing. Obviously air filter, steering system, carburetor. The inline six is very narrow. You can look straight down because you've got all this space to work around. You can see the tie rod going across uh, the belt. The cooling system, 17 quarts. On the opposite side, the distributor and spark plug seem to be your main point of interest. And of course, the battery is located on the side here as well. So that done, let's close it up. I do see that there is no stand on this hood. It's just held in place by the spring, which is convenient. So anyway, let's close it up and see what else we can find inside. I've just noticed actually that the, the top half of the headlights are covered with chrome. You only get a half a headlight. Not sure why. If you look underneath the rear of the vehicle here, you're going to see that the rear suspension is leaf springs. There are all of three leaves to the spring. The front axles though, those are coils. And you can also see the fuel tank under there and well, the exhaust system. So now we move to the crew compartment. And of course the brass 
will be sitting in the right rear seat because that way he is closest to the footpath as the driver comes around and opens the door for him. Which does make the question, if they're called the brass, why didn't they put lots of brass trim instead of chrome? Oh, this is decadently soft. A little tight, mind. Well, the commander's position, I will say he's got a heck of a lot of headroom for his big hat. There is a dome light top center here. And uh, it looks like his only controls, well, his accessory is an ashtray and communication with the driver is obviously verbal, or I guess you could be close enough to strangle him if necessary. The, the interior is actually pretty much the lowest quality interior that Chevrolet offered. So although it looks kind of okay at first, it, it's a case of, well, the only reason you, you, find, you think it's cool is because it's so different. Uh, again, the base of the base for the army. Uh, otherwise, close the door, and the commander does have his door glass regulator handle. Look at that, it regulated. You can even lock the door. The passenger seat is probably almost never used. It is a bench seat, not two individual seats, so you could fit a couple of security guards in here next to the driver. The flooring, it looks initially like carpet, it's not. It actually looks, I think it's a vinyl or uh, some sort of plastic like that. There is the data plate on the dash. Now, there is a sign elsewhere in this vehicle that states that only three original of these 1503 staff cars complete with data plate exist. So, there you go, something I didn't know. For the front door, there are multiple regulators. So, in addition to the chrome door handle you have a large chrome regulator for the main door glass and then you have this little additional door glass held in place by a, a little safety interlock I guess which you can then wind open and close indeed all the way forward even to get a little bit of draft coming in should you so desire it has probably been many moons since the last time a car was fitted with one of those And then, of course, there is the driver's position with a, you got a good Detroit lean going almost. Simple rear view mirror. I don't see a dimming option. Sunshades. I can't imagine that many owners of this sort of vehicle today would actually want to be driven around in the back, but uh, the gauges are very simple. I have indicator uh, indicators, for lack of a better term, up top. Temperature, speedometer, and fuel tank. Underneath, again, that optional extra, there were two of them. One was the heater, so you can select the heater from here or defroster inside or outside air. That was unexpected. Um, it would appear that the wipers are always live regardless of the position of the, uh, the ignition. So somewhere in here, aha, is the other luxury extra, the cigarette lighter. Of course, when Chevrolet were designing these things, they weren't talking about staff officers, so they gave the cigarette lighter to the driver. Indicator stock on the left. Um, your traditional three pedals, uh, the handbrake I discovered earlier, and a simple glove compartment that well, it doesn't carry a hell of a lot, but it's got something in there. Little air vent, not really much else to say. Nice big steering wheel. The gear shift. Again, this was the base model vehicle, and the base model 150 came with a three-speed, not even an overdrive, just a simple three-speed, and there is nothing on here that tells me which gear is which. After a little bit of playing around, I did discover that reverse is back and up, 
and the other three gears are down and forward. I'm kind of curious what other switches come on now. These are the lights, yes. I have no idea. Again, lots of room up top for my head and hat and well, that's it. I just kind of, kind of wonder if you can move the seat back. There is a lever here, so I guess you can. Yes, you can. You can move the seat forward and backwards. It is currently in the rearmost position, which suits me fine. So, yeah, a 57 Chevy. So there you go, a 1957 model 1503 staff car. Now, like a lot of the other vehicles that I've been going over uh, last while, this one is available for sale in early May in the Rock Island auctions auction. And uh, if you come back towards the end of May, I should have updated the text description below this video as to just how much money this went for. So final thought, there have been quite a few debates over the army of today, whether or not it's as good as the army of yesteryear and questions are, you know, should we increase the length of basic training? Should we change the personnel system? They have it all wrong. What you really need is more chrome. All right, so we're gonna come back up to the front and pop the hood. Oh, by the way, the fuel tank is 16 gallons. There is actually a little bit of style so, uh, in as much as it goes uh, in amongst the chrome door handle and chrome door glass window regulator. And sort of cheap plastic here. You have this interesting little embroidery effect here. Anyway, hood. or parking brake. I do not often muck around with 1950s vehicles. I'm being straight up honest here. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> 